103.7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information, and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Hey, ho, welcome in. Hour two of Talk of the Town here. It's uh, four minutes after eight. Henry Hinton back in the studio after being gone for several days. Trent McGee here at the sports desk this morning. And uh, at the news desk this morning from WITN is uh, WITN staff meteorologist Matt Engelbrecht. Good morning, gentlemen. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I hadn't seen you forever, Matty. It's been a while. Where yeah. you been? I was uh, gone and you were gone. Cancun. Oh, oh you went to Cancun? Yeah, it was last week. No I kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah. How was that? It was good. Came back alive. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, my son and daughter-in-law were at a, uh, a wedding in Cancun week before last. No, we didn't see him. Yeah. We didn't see him down there. I know. Yeah. They were, they were probably on the way back when you yeah. were going. You know, the, the one thing that stood out while I was down there, I remember thinking to myself, you said, you were questioned why we'd, grow, why we'd go down to Cancun in the summer because it'd be so hot. Right, yeah. yeah Come to find out, I came back, did some research. It was hotter here that week. 96, 97 degrees. Well, it was a, it was ridiculous here that way. Yeah, I was that was the week of the U.S. Open. Oh goodness, melting chocolate. The That's women, the women's U.S. Open. Yep. Yeah. So it was good time. We. So what was what was the temperature down there? Uh, it was probably 86, 87 every no day. No kidding. Yeah. Just did humid. you did you like Cancun? I liked it. Yeah, it was all inclusive, so everything was taken care of. Did you stay like much. sandals or something? It was uh, Scandals. Palace Resorts. We didn't go to Cal. No, we didn't do Sandals. We did Sandals in Jamaica, but it was yeah. Palace Resorts. Wonderful. You're a world traveler, aren't you? Well, I don't want to brag, but... <laughs> <laughs> no. I've been to, wow. to Europe a few times. Yeah. yeah. Here and there. And you're from Detroit, which is really... Yeah, we get out a lot. A We're shame. from Detroit. It's a shame. <laughs> If you grow up in Detroit, yeah. you got to travel. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be something better out there. I'll find it. Yeah. yeah. I'll find it. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good to be back. What else do you have to offer? Anything else for the audience this morning? Um, just rain showers. I don't think we'll yeah. get any severe weather, but uh, Thank you for that. Some rumbles and thumbers. And, thumbers uh, and Engelbrecht is all yeah. excited about the World Cup. Love the World which, Cup. Which, by the way, did not surprise me yeah. at all. I was not surprised that that Maddie is keeping up with the World uh -huh. Cup. It's a good time. Yeah, good I tell time. you what, everything from protesters to start the World Cup to yeah. the U.S. and maybe a surprising win over Ghana to start their World Cup round, which will likely end tomorrow. How are how are to, we doing? How is the United States? Two players States biting yeah. other players. Yeah, yeah I tell you, I you know Brandon crazy. Murphy, right? I, I Brandon do. Murphy. I was at the Ale House on Sunday. Were you guys having a private conversation now? Do you you at know? Six, what? Okay, no. go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, because he's, he's, he is, he's story, not a soccer fan. He's not a football fan. Okay. But right. Sunday night, 6 o'clock at the Ale House, that place was hopping. Hey, there, there are people that love football. There are people that love soccer. So maybe it's me that doesn't they get just, this. I just. Well, uh, look, Billy Weaver it was yesterday awesome. said the same thing. You know, he, he loves watching it. But I told Billy, I think when you see the, the, the media outlets cutting to the big cities like New York, Chicago, L.A., and they're showing the throngs of people out watching the game. And when they cheer, when America scores a goal, you almost feel like, okay, I, I got to be a part of this. Oh, I want to be a part of this. You know? and, you, and you have no that's idea. What, that's what I think it is. You have no idea what's because, going on. Because, I mean, watching one soccer on the team. Is, is a little bit like watching paint dry. There's I mean, there's, score. There's, no, score, there's, there's, no, there's no scoring. The oh. There's no scoring. What happened Sunday night? Ronaldo. Oh. You had to wait all the way to the end of the game to see that. I'm going to no. flip a table. <laughs> I'll do it. This thing is not built that well. See, that's what I'm telling you. These, these soccer fans, they're violent. They, they are violent. They, I will these, bite you. No. I won't. Yeah. I won't. Turn, to, turn this up. Here's uh, Conan O'Brien talking about the uh, player biting the other player. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this today, it was crazy. In the World Cup match today, Uruguay's Luis Suarez bit a player from Italy's team. It's the third time he's done it. That's what, that's it. Mine thing is this, he bites players. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah. In fact, last time he bit a Chinese player, then claimed he was hungry an hour later. <laughs> No I mean, charge for that one, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's bizarre. Good. That's bizarre. Yeah, so they bite each other, and mm. that's not my sport. 
That's okay. I'm not investing a second of my time watching that. I'm sorry. But it could be me. I'm just saying. Because, you know. But, you know, I think back uh, to uh, the fact that people are actually watching soccer on television. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what my father's uh, uh, generation would think of that, you know. They would, they would think, you bunch of wusses. Yeah. <laughs> or they would think, why is the clock counting up and up. not counting down? <laughs> what the hell is this sport? The, the worst part is the greatest of... generation would not watch soccer. <laughs> they don't understand oh. that the time limits. Like yeah. you figure 90 minutes, the game's over, and then there's 90 minutes plus four or five minutes. Right. You can't wrap your head around right. that. It's, like, oh, okay. it, uh, but interesting. it's a different It is sport. what it is. It's good stuff. Tomorrow's going to be a very exciting day, that's for sure. Yeah, it will be. Look at it. Guy canceled a meeting with me yesterday afternoon because of the World Cup. He said, unless we're watching the World Cup, that's I, can't, I can't be there with you. Good. I said, okay. Good. You know, I told you I was at the, uh, along with your boss, Engelbrecht, yeah. hey. the G-man, Mark mm -hmm. Gettner and I, we were uh, in broadcasters from all over the state. We converged on um, Durham, the Washington Duke, and we had our North Carolina Association of Broadcasters convention at Duke. How about that? Yeah. Who would have ever thought that would happen? Yeah. Well, our I grandfathers did. wouldn't have expected that. Washington either. Duke Inn. Yeah. Yeah, the Washington Duke Inn. Nice it's place. a five star hotel. Very nice place. Indeed. I've stayed there before, but it's been a while. And of course, it's right on the Duke Golf Course. But the uh, North Carolina Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame induction ceremony was Monday night. And um, uh, for those of you who've watched WRAL sports over the years, Eastern North Carolina's own Tom Souter oh. from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, yeah. was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Got a chance to uh, to visit with uh, Souter a little bit. Jay Jennings is down in Edgecombe County watching uh, Southwest Edgecombe. And I saw, the, I saw Let's the, go to the Jelly Roll. Jay I, saw, I saw the Jelly Roll. I saw <laughs> Jelly there. Jay Jen, I got to know all those guys when I was doing the games in Chapel Hill. In fact, it's funny, Souter and I had some... We shared some funny uh, stories about those days. Uh, uh, Jay Jennings, who was the sports photographer, now he's dead. Jay told me he's still there at WRAL, but he's, he's just doing like doc I didn't know that. documentaries and stuff wow. now. Bob Holliday, all those guys were there. But uh, Souter was great. He got up and told some great stories about interviewing. Uh, Jay, the first interview he ever did on uh, WRAL television was with John Wooden. They sent him down to Campbell University game. Basketball School. To interview, to interview John Wooden. I was probably at, at the – I actually went to uh, Campbell Basketball School when I was like 15 years old and uh, met John Wooden. And he was talking about how bad he was on the interview. And John Wooden – Souter said he was so bad. He told the, the photographer, stop the tape. Stop the tape. John Wooden did. And he looked at Souter and said – Son, if you're going to make it in this business, just have a conversation with me. Forget all those questions that you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. What a what a, uh, what a guess you first. You know, uh, Tom is Tom is one of the uh, nicest, most self-effacing people that I've known in the television business, other than Matt Engelbrecht. Hello. But he really is a super nice guy, and well, also my lawyer, Mark Prack got inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's been working with the broadcaster since the 70s, and so uh, a couple of new inductees it. into the North Carolina Hall of Fame. We going to the phones? Ed is on the phone. Good morning, Ed. How are you? Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing fine. Are you calling about the World Cup? Yes. I am, and I apologize oh I got in so late. That's all right. You mentioned something that is puzzling and you may have an, an opportunity to explain to a lot of us. Uh-oh. I, I was watching the game, and I saw the referee put up a four-minute extension for penalties, and then it changed to a five-minute oh later. Oh, This is technical. There, I don't, I, 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 do how does want to that get work? And this why is, was there, and since we you know, lost in that last see, minute, now you, uh, and lose, you, we and you and about three other people listening care about that. Oh, that's well, no. Uh, All right, do you know the answer, Engelbrecht? Well, they, there we go. So I, I was a referee back in. Uh, well, in so high do you know the answer? I know the answer. We don't need your resume. Well, just I'm just saying, there's there is <laughs> credentials. A there's credentials. Back in the day, answer. I was a resume. I'm, I'm like, not making this up. I was a referee. Is that uh, the referee is in control of the game I'm and they are in charge of him? 
justifying. Right. They're, they're in charge of justifying how much time is taken out when the ball rolls over the line or when a player goes down. And two times during the game, first half, second half. <laughs> Wake up. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Are you done? Hey. This is important. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> They can add on yeah. up to uh, X amount of time, depending on how much was wasted during the, uh, the first or second half. So it's actually added on twice. Mm, riveting. But, but how can they change it once they put it up? I, I don't remember them changing it. Um, and yeah, they that, put that's up a, four minutes, and then they put up five minutes. Could you guys, like, talk on the phone later? Can, 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 can <laughs> everybody doesn't play golf. <laughs> but, but that that's true. That's true. And that's true. But nobody watches soccer. Touche, Ed. Touche. You, I'm sorry, Henry, but you are living in the past, and I'm older than you are. I am. This is good stuff. Ed, I, have I, like to, I, have, I have to be honest with you. You are absolutely right about that. Uh, you nailed me, my friend. Yeah. I'm living in the past. But well, we love you. We love you. Well, God bless you, man. <laughs> there are some things I just ain't going to change, and uh, watching soccer is one of them. Have your friends call in. <laughs> Get your friends online. Hey, hey Henry. Yeah. Henry. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, dish ad with the uh, girl from Brazil dancing wearing the red headdress? No. If you have not seen that, you are missing it. I don't know what. Channel you're watching. You sound like a dirty old man now. Yeah. You've, you've gone from soccer to being a dirty old man. Google hey, yo, Brazilian the headdress dish. The most innovative advertising Google it, McGee. I have ever seen. Google it, McGee. I want to see it. And I know it. how you are about advertising. Um, uh, now, that I can get into. All right, Ed. Thank you. For, where are you calling from, Ed? I'm calling from Greenville. All right, Ed. Thank you for the call. Appreciate <laughs> you listening. One. Mm-hmm. Get, get back get back to your watching Uruguay and Brazil play. That World doesn't Cups. make any sense. <laughs> you know what? It's fine. What doesn't make any sense? Uruguay and Brazil. That doesn't Uruguay make any sense? No, they didn't play. They, they played Italy. That's where the chomping came into play. The zombies. Whatever. <laughs> the, the zombies? The guy that bit one of Uruguay's guys bit mm. Italy. Okay. Yep. I'm not. I, I just refuse to get into that. We have some new people in the control room, by the way. We introduced you to our. We have a new intern in there, so and, I, and I actually there. recognized this young lady. It's a tradition, Julia, to be ambush interviewed on the air as a um, as an intern. And this time, yes, I yes. recognized this young lady uh, for several reasons. Uh, Julia Allsbrook is our new intern in the control room this morning. Good morning, Julia. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Uh, and now, Julia is a, as I recall, a volleyball star, correct? No, softball. You were close. Softball? Softball. You don't play, you don't play volleyball? I did play volleyball. I thought you did, yeah. But you, you're a softball star at, uh, at D.H. Conley. Have you graduated? Yes, sir. I did graduate. And where are you going next year? Meredith. No, are you gonna play softball? Yes, sir. Did you get a scholarship? Kind of, sorta. Kind of, sorta. But you were, uh, you yeah. We we followed your career because your father, who is a uh, Greenville police officer and a member of the management team at the Greenville Police Department, is an old friend of mine for many years, Richard Allsbrook, and he retired last week when I was out of town. I missed his retirement party. How did that go? It went really well. It went really well. Yeah. Can't believe he's retired. I know Richard Allsbrook. He's a legend in Greenville. He's a legend in Greenville. I remember the funny story last year about <laughs> some of the other cops were, were, were joking about Richard because he apparently, and if you know Richard, he's a great human being. He's a great One human being. Best you but he be. was chasing a guy who stole a. You remember this story, Julia? He was chasing. That somebody had taken the cash drawer out of yes. a cash register yes, yes, and was yes. running down the street, and Richard was running after it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have given a hundred dollars to see that. Yeah. <laughs> he was chasing the guy who was running down the street with the cash drawer. Oh my God! And he caught him. He did. Yeah, he did. That's, that's dedication. And he didn't have to shoot him, which is even better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so Richard Allsbrook is uh, is retired. We need to get Richard on one morning. We did to uh, come in and would that make you nervous if you're interning here at the time that your father comes in as a guest on the show? No, bring him on. Yeah, 
You're, you have a you have a great father, a great family, by the way. Thank you. And I'm glad you were here, intern. Are you going to be here she with us this summer? To go into reporting and, and, and things really? like that. So she should do some of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for coming in this morning. Julia Allsbrook, our new, uh, our new intern. Uh, 20 minutes after the hour, uh, we're going to be talking to, we got a special guest coming in, a um, young man by the name of Kyle Robinson. Kyle is uh, the director of basketball operations at ECU. A lot of ECU talk this week. You had the commissioner of the AAC mm -hmm. on yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay, talked earlier this morning about the fact that Cliff Godwin is going to be named tomorrow as the new ECU baseball coach, which we're very excited about. Uh, but Kyle is the director of basketball operations at ECU, and he has an autistic son. And he has been working like crazy this summer and during the legislative session. To he's been he's been one of the leading person uh, people in the state pushing the legislature to. Um, to ensure autistic children. You know, you may not be aware that North Carolina is one of the uh, really poorly insured states for autistic kids. And um, Cal is trying to change that. Uh, Representative Brian Brown has been uh, working very hard with him on that. And uh, the bill has gone to the Senate Insurance Committee. And I know that um, Senator Norm Sanderson has been instrumental in helping uh, Kyle on this, but Kyle's going to come in in a few minutes and kind of tell us uh, what's going on with that and give us a little update on that. So uh, the ECU Director of Basketball Operations, Kyle Robinson, will be with us in a few minutes. 21 after 8. Let's get a break in. We're coming back. More talk of the town. When we return, World Cup soccer, so uh, so uh, so soccer. I heard that. Soccer fan uh, Matt Engelbrecht with the news up next from WIT, and we'll be right back. Eastern Carolina, want big savings on a huge selection of 2014 new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs? Greenville Toyota's got it. Looking for new Toyotas with discounts up to $5,000 off or payments from $139 a month? Greenville Toyota's got it. Want to save thousands with 0% financing? Greenville Toyota's got it. How about covered maintenance for life? Greenville Toyota's got it. If you are looking to get it all, give us just 15 minutes to show you how we can lower your current payment, and you'll see why. Greenville Toyota's got it. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. And we're back at Boyd's Carpet in Winterville on Fire Tower Road. I'm standing here with Jason Boyd. Jason, beautiful, newly remodeled showroom here. Tell us about it. Well, Hank, as we go into our 20th year here, we remodeled our showroom. We've got things kind of refixed up nice for everybody because it is the spring here in 2014. We want everybody to come see us. Of course, you know, we're located here on Fire Tower Road. Our phone number is 321-7066. We'd like everybody to come see what's happening here at Boyd's Carpet. And you've even expanded your staff for the spring. T tell, talk about your new staff. Well, last year was one of our best years ever, and we expanded our uh, staff to make it uh, more suitable for all our customers because we're offering more than just carpet, our wood, our ceramic tile, our LVT, and we want everybody to make sure that we do our shop at home service so we got plenty of people to serve you. And tell us about some special financing offers you may have available. Yes, come see us again for our 12-month financing with GE Card Service. So we're here at Boyd's Carpet, uh, anytime here to serve you. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer-free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Unlock the best life has to offer for generations to come. Introducing the Legacy Membership exclusively at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. As a Legacy member, you'll not only enjoy all the benefits of an active, family-friendly lifestyle, your children and grandchildren will enjoy membership status as well. Belonging to Ironwood is remarkable. Sharing it with your entire family 
is even better. Become a Legacy member today, only at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. Golf at its finest, life at its fullest. Keeping you ahead of the story, this is your Eastern Carolina News Update. Good morning. Time now, 824 on this Wednesday. Getting you set uh, for the chance of rain later on this afternoon. Trent, we'll have more of that in a second. First, uh, we'll give you the latest headlines from WI10 and WI10.com. I'm Matt Ingebrek. The popularity of electronic cigarettes is creating new job opportunities for residents in Greenville. The company, Paralum, is in the process of opening a manufacturing facility to produce the liquid used in e-cigarettes. The 1,800-square-foot building on Woodbridge Park Road will create 21 full-time jobs that would have an average salary of $35,000 a year. The liquids will be produced and then sold to other businesses to sell. The company spokes spokesman, Will Doherty, says they received a $210,000 grant from the Department of Commerce to help jumpstart this venture. The company hopes to open sometime in late August. We're told those job openings will be posted on their website in the near future. A Virginia man on vacation with his family was buried alive during a while digging a tunnel, tunnel in the sand. The National Park Service says it happened around 2.40 p.m. on Monday, south of Salvo on Hatteras Island. Spokeswoman Cindy Holda says family, friends, and bystanders tried to pull the 49-year-old David Frazier out from the sand uh, before rescue crews arrived. She said the Fredericksburg man was buried for approximately 10 minutes and they were unsuccessful in resuscitation efforts. Holda says uh, five to six feet of sand fell on the man as he was trying to dig the underground tunnel connecting two holes that had been dug on the beach. And finally, a Craven County man will spend at least the next four years in prison after admitting he robbed a store at gunpoint. District Attorney Scott Thomas says Demetrius Woods was convicted Tuesday of robbing the Dollar General in Vanceboro back on December 20th. The 23-year-old walked around the store for a few minutes before taking out a handgun and a knife and demanded money from the cashier. Thomas says Woods got away with just about $145 but was caught on camera as he left the store. He was eventually identified and confessed to the robbery under questioning. The judge sentenced Woods to between uh, just over four years to a little more than six years in prison. Those are our latest news headlines from WI10 and WI10.com. Time now, 826 on this Wednesday. I'm Manny Gobrek. Scattered showers and storms expected for this afternoon. Humid with a high of 91 degrees for tonight. Partly to mostly cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms before midnight. A low of 72. Thursday brings scattered clouds with the possibility of a rain shower late in the day with a high of 93 degrees. And for your Friday, partly cloudy chance of again. Uh, again, a chance of a thunderstorm late in the day with highs in the low 90s and lows in the low 70s. All right, our news and weather uh, update this hour, a service of Homer Tire Real Estate. Homer Tire, the Homer Tire team here in Greenville. And uh, if you need to sell your home, there's just one telephone number that you need to remember. It is 758-H-O-M-E, 758-4663. That's the Homer Tire team. And, uh, uh, you know, we've t told you about these success stories uh, over and over again. There's so many of them. But uh, here's one from Farmville, actually. After listening with another agent watching their Farmville home sit unsold for two years, a family uh, changed agencies and went to the Homer Tire team. Homer sat down with them, showed them his marketing plan, put their house back on the market, and it sold in 90 days. Now, that's what happens over and over again. Uh, we have stories like that that we can tell you about from people who use Homer Tire, the Homer Tire real estate team. And, of course, remember the Homer Tire team guarantee if, if the home doesn't sell by the deadline and the date that you need it sold, they will buy the home from you at the Homer Tire real estate team. They'll buy the home from you. And, uh, and also remember uh, you can fire them at any time and pay them nothing. Call them at 758-HOME, 758-4663. The Homer Tire Real Estate Team. All right, 28 minutes after the hour, coming back, Kyle Robinson, the Director of Basketball Operations for ECU Basketball, is here. And uh, he's been working with some uh, legislators, Brian Brown, Norm Sanderson, some folks, on uh, trying to help the legislature guide them through some of the uh, autism problems in the state. We are not, apparently, North Carolina doesn't do a great job of, uh, of, of uh, ensuring autistic children. 
And uh, Kyle's at ground zero on that because he has an autistic child. We're going to talk to him next on Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Football fans, see the tradition, the excitement, the hard-hitting action this fall in Dowdy Pickland Stadium as the Pirates kick off their inaugural season in the American Athletic Conference and host in-state rival North Carolina. With a bowl victory and conference MVP at quarterback, the Pirates are poised for great things. We challenge you to be, live, and give undaunted as part of the fan base at second to none. Purchase your East Carolina football season tickets today by calling 1-800-DIAL-ECU or visit ecupirates.com. <laughs> Yes, you can have it all. Quality flooring, expert assistance, free in-home estimate, professional installation. It's all here during the National Gold Tag Flooring Sale. And did we say lowest prices of the year? Dream it, plan it, live it today. Abbey Full Service Flooring, Fire Tower Road, Winterville. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on Bee Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or lease the all-new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. All right, welcome back uh, this morning, Talk of the Town. Uh, we've got a, a, a guest here in the studio and a guest on the telephone in the studio, Kyle Robinson, the Director of Basketball Operations for the ECU basketball team here live in the studio. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Henry. Um, I'm glad to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, for and you're here to talk about um, uh, this uh, legislation that we're working on uh, in Raleigh right now for uh, autistic children, but for people who don't know what the basketball operations manager does, the director of basketball operations, you're on Jeff Lebo's staff at ECU. What is your job? Basically, I do all the administrative stuff from the budget to the travel, anything besides coaching I'm involved with. Um, I've been here for five, going on five years. Mm -hmm. I joined the staff when Coach Lebo got the job. I was at the College of Charleston with Coach Cremins before that, but uh, Love Greenville. Coach Lebo is an unbelievable person, unbelievable person to work for, and uh, really blessed. His golf game had been very good, though. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say the same thing about my – he's been giving me grief about my golf game ever since we played together uh, in a tournament a month ago. So that was for you, Coach. Uh, you know, uh, interestingly, you came into North Carolina, and, uh, and, and you found out when you got here that – that, that state law regarding insuring autistic children, uh, North Carolina is not the best, is it? It's not, Henry. And we, I didn't really know it when we first moved, but um, our son was diagnosed with autism last April. And uh, we started the journey with Samuel. Um, he was diagnosed at the UNC Center for Developmental Disabilities um, by Dr. Brown. 
And our question was uh, to Dr. Brown was, what can we do to help our son? And uh, Dr. Brown was like, Samuel needs 30 to 40 hours of week, um, a week of intense therapies. And uh, we asked her where to get that at. And uh, she said, there's it's very rare in North Carolina to find places uh, to get Samuel that intensive therapy um, because insurance doesn't cover it and families can't you know, afford it. Mm -hmm. uh, we found ABC of NC in Winston-Salem. So my wife, she and my son Samuel leave on Sunday afternoons and drive to Winston-Salem and stay throughout the week so Samuel can get the therapies he needs and then they come back on the weekends. Wow. And uh, insurance doesn't pay a dime. They deny the claims. Um, so we've taken out loans. My father-in-law has been unbelievable. He has delayed his retirement. Um, so my so his grandson can get the therapies he needs this year. Yeah, that's something. And, and, and he's made tremendous progress, Henry. Uh, Samuel, when he started in August, he couldn't communicate at all. Uh, I would walk in the house, and it was like I didn't even walk in the house. He didn't even re recognize me. Now he can say hey, he can say bye, he can communicate by pointing, um, he gives hugs. He's came such a long ways, and, and we're truly blessed that, that we found ABC of NC, and we've made it work for this year. Um, but families like ours can't afford to do it forever. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the cost is fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year for these um, therapies, uh, and and we're blessed. We found a way to make it happen this year. There's some other families that aren't as fortunate and, mm -hmm. and their child suffers so uh, we've got a strong passion for it and uh, now other state let's say that other you, that you you are getting this uh your child was getting this therapy in other states would insurance pick it up in other states exactly this so, so is it is it that the north carolina law doesn't require insurance companies to cover this exactly there's 37 states that require insurance co companies the the cover um the autism therapies and uh, North Carolina is one that doesn't. Um, a lot of states have a cap. The The proposed bill currently is a $36,000 cap per year. Mm -hmm. um, the insurance co companies would have to cover. There's some states that don't have a cap. States like South Carolina, I believe, is, is $50,000 uh, per mm -hmm. year. Um, so, so really, when you get right down to it, if you had stayed at the College of Charleston, I hate to say this, but you, you would have been better off. Exactly. Because your insurance would have covered it, but because you're here in North Carolina when your son was diagnosed, and that just that's that's a tough that's a tough situation. Now I know you've been working very hard back and forth to Raleigh, and a bill to change that law has gotten traction. And I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the folks in the legislature. I know Brian Brown's been very helpful to you. He has, and, and, he, and Tom Tillis. He has. Um, the bill, HB 498, which Lori Unum with Autism Speaks, uh, she's been dealing with this for, for years, um, was passed in the House last spring, and Senate leadership said that they weren't going to move on it because they were worried about Obamacare. Um, well, all that was made clear, cleaned up to make sure it had nothing to do with Obamacare care between now and between last year and this short session. But Senate leadership has still to do anything um, to get out of the insurance committee. So what has happened last week and what was uh, what will be actually voted on on the House for today is a regulatory bill and the autism insurance bill has been put in that regulatory bill to try to get it passed mm -hmm. a different way. Right. And Speaker Tillis has been unbelievable, an unbelievable advocate for families with autism. And um, Brian Brown spoke out in the um, committee meeting yesterday morning um, loud and clear in support of the, of the bill. Um, he was tremendous. Senator Sanderson has been unbelievable. And, uh, now, you have had support from the Senate from Norm Sanderson, our Eastern North Carolina, and he's vice chair of this committee, is he not? Yes. Yes, he is. And that's that's positive. Yes, it is. But but Senate leadership, uh, specifically uh, uh, you know Phil Berger, Tom Apodaca, they have yet to, to really show their hand on where they're going with this, right? Exactly. All right, this might be a good time to bring in uh, Lori. Uh, Lori, is it Unum? Unum. Got, Unum. Lori Unum, who is Vice President of Government Relations, Government Affairs for the group Autism Speaks in Raleigh. Good morning, Lori. How are you? 
I'm great. How are you, Henry? I'm doing good. Thank you for being on. You know, this is an interesting situation. I knew nothing about this until Kyle started reaching out uh, to me a while ago. And then all of a sudden you kind of realize North Carolina doesn't really treat families with autistic children very well, do we? No, not, not in terms of making sure that families can get access to care. Yeah. Um, you know, North Carolina has been a leader on the autism front for decades in terms of research going on in the Triangle and uh, the TEACH program at UNC. But when it comes to ensuring that families can get coverage for the treatment that's recommended by their doctors, North Carolina is lagging way behind. So this bill that Brian Brown has been helpful on, Speaker Tillis, is, is pushing through, and, and we hope that the Senate will move on uh what, what would it do it would require insurance companies to cover the kind of things that kyle's son is uh the kind of therapy that kyle's son is getting now that's exactly right it, and it's the same law that's passed in 37 other states as kyle mentioned it requires health insurance that's based here in north carolina to cover treatment that is medically necessary and evidence-based. We're not talking about alternative things that are way out there. We're talking about your standard run-of-the-mill, the most commonly prescribed treatments and therapies that a doctor has examined your child and a doctor has said your child needs. And so it simply requires health insurance to cover those treatments for your child. And it seems only fair, you know, these are families who are not asking for a handout from the government. These are families who have been paying premiums their whole lives so that in case something happens to one of their kids or themselves, there'll be coverage there. Mm -hmm. And it seems only fair that insurance now needs to step up and do its part. Uh, where does the bill stand? Yeah, well, you know, Kyle and you both have said that uh, Tom Tillis has been supportive. So obviously uh, it's, it's going to be okay in the House side. But like so many things, it seems like, it's gotten stalled when it goes over to the Senate. So where do you think it stands, Lori, and what are the chances of uh, getting something done on it? Well, I'm still very hopeful that we will get it done in the next few weeks in this short session. You know, we did, as Kyle described, we, we did pass through the House flying colors last year. The vote was 105 to 7. And, and then got stalled in the Senate because of some issues that they identified with the bill. But the autism community and Senate leadership have worked together over the past year to remedy those problems. And um, e even though we haven't moved in the Senate so far this year, I really think that we, that we are going to. And um, the, the senators have heard from autism families all over the state. The grassroots push has been amazing, and I think we actually have a lot of support in the Senate. I know that big insurance is pressuring leadership to not give us a hearing and not move this bill. And, you know, they, they have lobbyists all over the place, the, the oh, big yeah. insurance companies do. Oh, yeah. Uh, very formidable opponents. But I really have to believe that the senators care about the people and the constituents in their districts who have been calling and asking for this bill to pass. The... Um the word that we're getting out of Raleigh, I've been in and out of Raleigh for the last week, and, and the, the word we're getting out of Raleigh is that the Senate and the House are so far apart on some budget issues that they literally may leave Raleigh in the next week or so and go home and not get a full budget agreement. And then, you know, they're going to have to hand pick a few things like teacher salaries and things like that that we know that they won't leave undone and do some sort of a continuing resolution. The News and Observer this morning actually mentions your bill as one of the bills kind of hanging in limbo. It's a, a, one of the things that they, uh, the, there's an article in the uh, Triangle State section of the News Observer today that talks about the fact that this bill is one of the bills, at least you're getting mentioned as some of the bills that could uh, get left undone, Lori, but uh, uh, you know, if they leave and go home and they do not get a full budget, th that's a problem for you, isn't it? It is, and I, I hear those rumors floating around, too. I hope that those are just kind of threats. Um, you think that might be some positioning well, to threaten the other guy? You yeah, know, the, thing, you the know. crazy thing about it is it's coming from both sides. 
Well, it is. I mean, and, and you know, it's like this game of chicken, and they want to see who bows out first. But I, I hope and pray that that's not the end result. The, the people of North Carolina um, deserve better than that, and um, I don't know where the fault lies. I'm not putting blame on anybody. I just hope and pray that, that our bill, which would be such a good thing, it'll be a feel-good me- measure for the legislature to pass. It will do wonderful things for the people of North Carolina. I just hope that it doesn't get caught up in the crossfires and, and fall down that way. I do, too. Uh, and uh, I know that, Kyle, you, you've met with Senator Norm Sanderson, right? I did. I met and, with him. And he's him. been supportive. He has. He's been great, Henry. Um, you know, he had his own daycare, um, so he knows all about mm-hmm. children. That's right. And, and I forgot dealing, about that. He dealing, did have a daycare center. Yeah, yeah, dealing with children with disabilities. And uh, he's in support of the bill. He, he is. Um, let's say that this that they don't move on this bill. You know, uh, kids that have autism, Lori, like Kyle's son. What's your son's name? His name's Samuel. Samuel, yeah. Like Samuel. If he doesn't get the kind of treatment that he's getting uh, in Winston-Salem now, uh, you know, the, the, we're just going to leave those kids behind in North Carolina, aren't we? That's exactly right. And, and that's why even very conservative leaders like Tom Tillis can look at this measure and say, this is a conservative thing to do. If these kids don't get treatment that their doctors have recommended when they're young, they are going to cost taxpayers a whole lot of money over their lifetime. Yeah. And, you know, so if, if you just want to talk about it in, in dollars and cents, I mean, let's set aside the whole human aspect of it. Uh, there's a study out of Harvard a few years ago that says each child with autism who doesn't get this treatment will cost $3.2 million over their lifetime Mm -hmm. in terms of special education and perhaps institutionalization for some of them or group housing. You know, autism is a spectrum, so it varies in terms of what services they would need. But um, if you average it all out, it's over $3 million per Mm -hmm. child. Yeah. So, you know, just, just look at it from an economic standpoint. It totally makes sense to invest the money up front and reap the savings in the long term. And frankly, it's not even the state. It's not the taxpayers spending the money up front. It's insurance. The families are paying premiums, and they're just trying to get the benefit of the bargain for their kids. All right, Lori. Well, good luck, and thank you for all your uh, your work on this. We'll be following this in the next few days because we're kind of at ground zero here in the next few days. And uh, where, where, whether this bill is going to move in the Senate or not. So we got our fingers crossed for you. We'll say a prayer for you. Well, we appreciate that very much, Henry. Appreciate the coverage and appreciate your prayers. Okay. Thank you, Lori Unum. Did I get it right? You Unum. It. Unum. Vice President of Government Affairs with Autism Speaks. And Kyle, uh, God bless you and your family. Uh, I, I hope that this turns out to be a positive solution for you because we don't want you to have to leave the state <laughs> I, I really appreciate it henry and appreciate yeah. your time and uh just keep uh, praying for us and uh contact your senators your house reps um sounds like senators is where you need to go exactly the house exactly. is, gonna, the, the yeah, house is supportive so yeah, we just got to get the senate on board and the senate has uh, been they've been tough on medicaid and other things this time around you know it's uh the the, um, the the money is scarce, and so the the idea here. But you know, when you hear a story about like the story that you're talking about, you know, you just you just have to think that uh, on a practical level, it just makes a lot of sense for the state to support this. It does. And, and one last point, Henry. Um, at the end of June, the state employees' health plan, on their own, passed the autism insurance. So families that are state employees like mine. Without, have, without being made to by the government. Well, without being made by the government, starting January 1st, my son Samuel will have autism insurance. So you, so you are going to have insurance I'm going to have coverage starting January 1st right. next year. But there's a lot of other families that won't if they're right. if they're not staying. Well, that says a lot about so. you. You're out there working for these other families, then, right? I, I mean, am. I am. Yeah. I've got I've got a passion for it, and I've yeah. seen this last year what these therapies have done for my son, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to give hope to other families affected by autism. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, good luck to you and Samuel and your family, and appreciate you coming in this morning. Thanks, Henry. Good to see you. Kyle Robinson, the Director of Basketball Operations at ECU. All right, 11 now in front of nine. We'll be back. McGee's got sports next. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Cherry. Explosively Cherry. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South just four miles from Bells Fork and features a comfortable healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy where we know dogs. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. And we're back at Boyd's Carpet in Winterville on Fire Tower Road. I'm standing here with Jason Boyd. Jason, beautiful newly remodeled showroom here. Tell us about it. Well, Hank, as we go into our 20th year here, we remodeled our showroom. We've got things kind of refixed up nice for everybody because it is the spring here in 2014. We want everybody to come see us. Of course, you know, we're located here on Fire Tower Road. Our phone number is 321-7066. We'd like everybody to come see what's happening here at Boyd's Carpet. And you've even expanded your staff for the spring. T tell, talk about your new staff. Well, last year was one of our best years ever, and we expanded our uh, staff to make it uh, more suitable for all our customers because we're offering more than just carpet, our wood, our ceramic tile, our LVT, and we want everybody to make sure that we do our shop at home service so we got plenty of people to serve you. And tell us about some special financing offers you may have available. Yes, come see us again for our 12-month financing with GE Card Service. So we're here at Boyd's Carpet uh, anytime here to serve you. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or lease the all-new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Talk of the Town, uh, Wednesday, June the 25th. Is it the 25th or the 26th? It's the, yeah, 20th. It's the 25th. It is the 25th. Yep. It? Five years ago today, the uh, death of Michael Jackson. Five years ago today. Uh, it I'm, seems like yesterday. I remember that, too, because we, we uh, actually took the boat out. Remember, uh, the country musician was here. We all, the yes. 103.7 did the you, you know, we were talking earlier this morning about where we were. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and she sang Man in the Mirror. Yes, she did. It was uh, Sarah Buxton. That's right. Sarah Buxton, Buxton. the country singer. Yep. We had her down uh, down at the coast. and That was a lot of fun. Did a little concert on the... Um, Coach Logan was there. Crystal Coast the Lady boat. or whatever that thing's yeah. called down there in Beaufort. That mm -hmm. was fun. By the way, uh, you know, the other night uh, also... Do you, do you guys watch The Voice? Are you big Voice fans? If it's on, Anybody? I'm, wa I'm watching it, but otherwise... You no. are a big Voice fan? Do you remember Adlai Stump? You do? Are you just saying that? You do? Do you do? One of our interns does remember this. Remind me again. Adley Stump, S T U M P. I met her at the, the North Carolina Association. She performed for us at the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters huh. Convention. I remember that name, Adley Stump. It's kind of an interesting and unusual name. That's why I remember it. It is. Was she on this season? She was what? Was she on this season or last season? She was on two seasons ago and she was on Team Blake. 
Okay, yeah, I do remember. But she her, did not actually. win. But she did get picked by by Blake. Yeah. And she's really a charismatic young lady. She performed for the uh, Broadcast Association convention in uh, in Durham on Monday night, and I got to know her. She's she really, from North Carolina. No, she's from Oklahoma. She's an Okie. Oh, Okie. But she's just signed a deal to do a reality TV show. Everybody's getting these reality TV contracts. I want one. She does mm-hmm. these. Uh, she does these uh, practical jokes on people in Nashville now. Ah. She just did a thing where she stole Joe Diffie's car. You know Joe Diffie, I, I the country Joe singer. Diff- You'd Diffie have to is. be a country music person to understand any of this. But uh, she's going to have uh, because of her name is her last name is Stump. They're going to make a play on that a reality show where she's doing these practical jokes, kind of like the what was the MTV show where they did practical punk 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 yeah stumped stumped. I get it. There you go. Okay, nice. So that watch for stumped coming to yeah. The, TV channel near you. All right, five minutes in front of nine. Let's check uh, sports right now. Our sports update this hour brought to you by Suddenlink. Here's McGee on sports. All right, former Pirates standout Cliff Godwin expected to be named as the new ECU head baseball coach at a press conference tomorrow, replacing Billy Godwin. He will, uh, will become the 11th head coach, uh, head baseball coach here at ECU. And again, expected to be introduced tomorrow at a press conference on the campus of ECU. He played at East Carolina from 1997 through 2001 and led ECU to a pair of Colonial Athletic Association titles. Godwin comes to ECU after serving as hitting coach at Ole Miss from 2011 until the season where the Rebels did make an appearance in the College World Series. Speaking of that, a deciding game three tonight in Omaha as Virginia will take on Vanderbilt. Uh, the Cavs beat the Commodores 7-2 to Tuesday night to force tonight's Game 3. Um, Virginia going for the first ACC National Baseball Championship since Wake Forest. They're the only one in 1955. And Vanderbilt going for the SEC's fourth title in the last six years. 8 o'clock start time tonight from Omaha, Game 3 of the College World Series. Some NBA news. LeBron James could possibly be on the move through his agent on Tuesday. James informed the Miami Heat that he has decided to opt out of the final two years of his contract, a move that means he becomes a free agent on July 1st. Could possibly see LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony hook up, uh, certainly, in the future. World Cup play tomorrow. Yeah, the U.S. will take on Germany there. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, coming up at 9 o'clock, your chance to win half price, not win, actually buy half price golf passes at the Sound Golf Links at Albemarle Plantation. The deal begins at 9 a.m. sharp. Thursday morning, and your chance to play one of the uh, best golf courses here in the, uh, Eastern North Carolina. And have you ever played it? I have, and it's where the NBA Pro have, Golf Tour is this week. I don't think I've ever played Albemarle Plantation, but I, I hear great things about my, it. And in fact, my dad played it over the weekend, and he said, I'm sure this, and, and Kenny Saunders and I, the head golf pro, talked about this on Monday. They set it up this way for the pros. He said, my dad said, fastest greens he's ever seen in his life anywhere. He said really? they were lightning well, see, the quick. Pros, the pros like it. That they way. do, yeah. Uh, I play. I told you I played the Duke golf course on Monday at this uh, meeting I was at, and um, it was like putting on concrete. You know when you were you were watching the uh, the U.S. Open when they were they were putting downhill on those uh, on those those mounded greens, those turtleback greens, those yeah. turtleback greens. So you putt from the top of the green, you putt down, and it would roll off the front. Mm-hmm. Of you. That's yeah. the way it was at Duke on yeah. Monday. Yeah, That's yeah, quick. I like yeah. them quick, but you know, at least Very make it easy quick. for us. Uh, yeah, so uh, Albemarle Plantation, half price passes tomorrow morning uh, starting at 9 a.m. You can call our switchboard here at the station, and you'll be able to get those. Uh, Albemarle Plantation, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful course. It really Absolutely is. Absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Right on the, I guess, is that is that the Albemarle Sound? Mm-hmm. Yep. It is. It's right on the yep. Albemarle Sound. Yeah. Uh, you know, tomorrow morning, I just noticed as I was looking at the schedule to see who's on tomorrow. And... Um, we're going to have another ECU coach on tomorrow, the uh, outside linebackers coach on uh, Ruffin McNeil staff. Dwayne Price is going to be here tomorrow morning. It's my kind of week. He's got a son who has, uh, I hope I am um, pronouncing this right, Swatchman Diamond Syndrome. It's, uh, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a syndrome um, inherited condition that affects many parts of the body, particularly the bone marrow pancreas and skeletal systems and they got a beautiful little boy mm-hmm. who's got that and uh they're having a event coming up so i wanted to promote that again a lot of members of our pirate nation family some of the kids of some of the coaches having some some issues so yeah you know. i tell you it was good to hear that story that uh, the, about 
uh, Kyle Robinson's son. And, you know, I was thinking, if you think you're having a bad day, you know, you think about a family who's dealing with a son or daughter who's in that situation. Uh, and, and you'll quickly change your mind about the day you're having. Well, that's exactly right. That's exactly you hear you hear the story about uh, Kyle's uh, father-in-law. I mean, who is uh, who is delaying his retirement to be able I know. to, to I mean, help this child get the treatment that he needs? And think about if you if your wife or husband you know was leaving town every Sunday and they're gone for the entire week and you don't, you only see them on the weekends. I mean, it's just not the way you wanna you wanna live uh, or have your family have to have to live their lives, and that's unfortunate. I am trying to get this uh, suddenly. All right, so Michael, so the suddenly commercial. Oh, there it is. I finally got it. But now I don't have time to read. Yeah, th- it's another one of these uh, computer things. The Mac Wars continues. The Mac. <laughs> they should. They should burn these Macs. Michael convinced me that this was the best computer ever, and it does play audio well. All right, anyway, we'll do that tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. We'll do our half-price sale for Albemarle Plantation at this time tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow.